Hi, my name is Marco Lisi. I work for the European Space Agency and I was a former advisor of the European Commission on Space Policies. I am presently also advising the European GNSS Agency in Prague. I will uh, uh, speak in this lecture about uh, EGNOS and Galileo, the two big programs of the European Union that are going to be the uh, pillars of the European PNT infrastructure. In terms of infrastructure, we are of course improving uh, the overall infrastructure in terms of constellation, in terms of ground segment. In IOB, we had only four satellites. We'll move uh, to up to 30 satellites, uh, going through a, an intermediate step of the early services where we need uh, approximately eight, 10 satellites. In terms of control centers, uh, we have already reached the, the two control centers that are fully redundant and, and that will support also in the future the, the system. And then uh, we are also getting to the number of uplink stations, uh, the TMC stations, uh, and the sensor stations. The sensor stations are very important. Uh, we'll, uh, at the end of the development, uh, we'll get to a number around 20. At the moment, we are already around 16 monitoring stations spread uh, a bit uh, all over the world, as we'll see in the uh, following slide. These are the centers. Uh, that are supporting Galileo. They are at the moment all based in Europe. Uh, here you can recognize, first of all, the uh, European GNSS Agency, GSA, that is based in Prague. And this is going to be the sort of headquarter where all the organization of the, of the Galileo and EGNOS programs is based. It will be also the interface with the, uh, with the users and with service providers. Then we we'll recognize in yellow the two control centers. One is uh, they are fully redundant, uh, so they can, one can back up the other in case of disasters or emergencies. One is based in the south of Germany, near Munich, Oberfartenhofen, at the DLR premises, and the other is based at uh, Fushino in Italy, at uh, a te telespazio plant. And then uh, there are uh, the uh, centers supporting the, uh, the launch phase. One is uh, in Germany, again, uh, at ESOC, ESOC being the operational plant uh, of uh, the European Space Agency, and the other in Toulouse uh, at the CNES uh, facilities, uh, CNES being the, Euro uh, the French uh, Space Agency. There, is, uh, there are two centers uh, for uh, uh, taking care of the security of uh, the Galileo system. One, uh, again, is in France, in the north of France, near Paris, and another is uh, in the uh, UK. There is a center in Belgium uh, that is monitoring and measuring the performance of the satellites. And last but not least, uh, a center in uh, Spain called Galileo Service Center. That is exactly what the name says. That it's the interface with users uh, of all kind, uh, the final user as well as the service providers. So it's going to be the window uh, of Galileo to the to open to the world. Uh, pictures of the uh, of the ground control center uh, at the top. Uh, you see the the Italian center in uh, near Fushino, and uh, at the bottom uh, the one uh, near Munich in Oberfartenhofen. And then uh, in this slide, uh, you see some uh, more pictures of the Fushino plant. At the moment, uh, the Fushino plant uh, is taking care of the mission uh, part of the ground segment, uh, that is uh, the generation of the navigation message. And you see in the, one of the, of the pictures, uh, the, the control center itself, the control room, where the operators uh, monitor through uh, computers and, uh, and displays uh, all the performance of the system, uh, collecting information from all over the world. And in this slide, uh, you see the present uh, position uh, in the world of the different type of stations that are needed for the uh, operation of, of Galileo. 
There are different stations. We mentioned the monitoring stations, the TPNC that are controlling the spacecraft in orbit, and the uplink stations. They have to be spread as much as possible uh, around the world. And uh, we had also, we wanted to, for security reasons, uh, to have them on European controlled territories. So we had to look for uh, places, uh, the remnants, uh, let's say, of the colonial past of Europe, uh, and, uh, and they have to also to be in uh, the proper geographical positions. So there are very funny places, uh, some nice islands uh, in, uh, in the oceans, in the different oceans, uh, some stations even in Antarctica or in the very north of, uh, of Europe, uh, close to the, to the North Pole. One uh, uh, important facility of Galileo is uh, the launch base that is in Kourou, in the uh, European uh, center of Kourou, that is uh, managed by the European Space Agency and CNES. And we have a dedicated launch pad that is uh, meant uh, only for the launches of the Galileo uh, satellites through Soyuz launchers. Then uh, we see uh, in this slide the station in Belgium at Redou, where we uh, monitor and measure the uh, performance of the satellites, in particular when the satellites are first put in orbit. So we have to check that the launch was okay and there were no problems uh, deriving from the launch itself. And uh, from this station, we perform very sophisticated measurements on the spacecraft itself and on the, on the payload. Then we have a number of uh, stations is in nice places. Uh, usually they are far from uh, centers, uh, let's say from cities and towns, uh, also to reduce the electromagnetic pollution. So this is, for instance, uh, the station in Kiruna, in, uh, in Sweden, north of, uh, of Europe. Then uh, we have uh, stations in uh, somehow exotic places like Numea or uh, Tahiti, Papete, or uh, the island of Reunion. This uh, station in Troll is in fact in Antarctica and is uh, very important because it covers uh, an area otherwise not covered by any other station. And also we have stations supporting the search and rescue uh, service. Uh, they are called the Miolat stations. So one is in uh, Las Palomas, one in Larnaca in Cyprus, and one in, uh, in the Spitsbergen uh, island. Now that we have seen uh, what uh, Galileo is uh, and uh, how it is proceeding, uh, it's also important to, uh, to say something about the, the development of the user technologies. The user segment is part of the uh, GNSS uh, uh, environment. And uh, in this picture, you see something very interesting. Uh, on uh, one side, uh, you see a very bulky uh, machinery, uh, equipment, uh, that was the first aeronautical uh, uh, GPS receiver in uh, 1977. It was huge, it was consuming a lot of uh, electric power. On the, the other side of the slide, you see the present technology. The technology is getting smaller and smaller and less and less power consuming. Today we have uh, really microchips that are in our smartphones and you have uh, uh, GPS receivers, GNSS receivers already some of them are already capable to receive uh, Galileo signals uh, very small. They can be put uh, wherever. And in fact, uh, there will be a, a huge diffusion of these receivers, uh, not only for uh, uh, user applications, but also, as we'll see in a minute, uh, in uh, machine type of applications, in the so-called Internet of Things. So the technology is really supporting uh, the diffusion of these receivers in uh, uh, in many type of different type of applications. And uh, mm, there is also a diffusion of applications uh, in uh, different areas. For instance, very important is the, the whole topic of fleet vehicle management, where you use navigation systems like uh, Galileo 
to uh, optimize the transportation uh, on roads, but also uh, uh, by rail or by, or by ships. Uh, the technology is getting so small that uh, you can think of applications that, that are wearable, for instance, uh, for sports or, uh, or for distress in distress situations. Uh, you want to really wear something uh, that is able to locate, uh, to, to, to fix your position and communicate it to a center. Also important are all the applications related to the handling of big loads and in, in general transportation of, of goods uh, wherever in the world. Uh, the location-based services or location-enhanced services are very many and various and uh, the, the usual way they are provided is through smartphones. Uh, so there are um, uh, areas of, of application that are related to the uh, provision of information that is related to your position, for instance, the weather in the uh, area where you are, or the type of uh, the point of interest that are around you, or uh, the, the monuments uh, around your place. There are, of course, uh, applications related to your safety and security, uh, also for your vehicles, uh, like uh, car insurance and uh, support in case of distress, and uh, recreation type of, uh, of applications, uh, even uh, gaming, uh, and of course commerce, uh, that where you can, uh, in fact, get information, for instance, about uh, some bargains uh, in shops that are around you and special offers and so on. So the, the, the variety of application is really huge and it is far more and more developing. In terms of uh, mass market, of course, the, we saw in a, a picture at the beginning of my lecture, uh, the bulk of the application stays in, uh, in vehicles, uh, cars and in smartphones. And uh, the fact that so many people are already ad getting advantage of uh, position and timing information uh, is changing really the uh, way our cities will, is going, are going to be organized. The more and more we speak about the smart cities, cities that are organized in such a way to optimize uh, many things uh, starting from transportation and the navigation uh, the navigation technologies uh, like the ones provided by Galileo are essential for this type of uh, development in the future. And uh, a further growth of uh, the uh, applications and of the uh, receivers using uh, GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite Systems, is linked to the a new, a completely new field that is uh, developing right now, that is that of machine to machine and Internet of Things. So not only uh, the uh, people will need uh, needs and will need in the future to know where they are and what is their, their exact timing, but also uh, things, the inanimated things, uh, that uh, starting from electrical appliances at home, but many other. Uh, and uh, this uh, market, of course, is, is huge because of the number of, uh, and you see in the picture that in a few years, uh, there will be some uh, almost 20 billion uh, receivers that will be placed, chips, in fact, miniaturized chips that will be placed in many different type of, uh, of uh, appliances. I like at the end of my lecture to mention uh, two uh, big important applications that are being uh, officialized in the European Union, and they are the so-called E-Call and the E-112. E-Call is uh, a, an infrastructure of the European Union that is meant to provide automatic help uh, to people in distress after a car accident. So the idea is, and it is linked to somehow to the E112 that I will mention in a minute. The e -call, the idea behind the e -call, uh, is that of providing uh, all cars by law, by regulation, that is being finalized these days at the European uh, uh, Parliament, 
is that of uh, uh, providing all cars in Europe uh, with an equipment uh, that in case of an accident, uh, with sensors uh, will sense the, uh, the, the accident, uh, will call immediately the uh, emergency and uh, the, the, the car driver will get automatically help from uh, the hospitals, from police. So this is very important to save lives and to speed up the, uh, the provision of uh, help, both medical and also other type of helps, police and so on, to people in distress. The E112 is the emergency, the uh, European emergency phone number that you can call wherever in Europe and gets you help from the police, again from hospitals. And the idea is also for the E112 to uh, uh, suggest the use of Galileo and Egnos as a way to automatically provide the authorities about your position. Of course, you have to call E112. It's not that they monitor your position continuously. But when you call E112, it's because you are in distress, then automatically your position will be given to the authorities and you will get uh, help in a much shorter time and with some uh, more reliability in terms of the time needed for uh, them to reach you and the type of service they provide. So these are important examples of how these uh, technological programs are really entering into the life and even in the safety of the European citizens.